So actually, we realize, right, that when we are young, right, we want to earn the approval of our parents. When we transit to school, we want to um, earn the approval of our friends. Eventually, when we go and we adults, right, we want to get the approval of the society. But the thing is, all we need is the approval from ourselves, that's all. We're all wired to connect. For me, friends, family, community is an integral part of my life. Usually, friends would share common interests or common professions. But what happens when we change our professions? What happens if we have a redirection of our priorities? We'll naturally spend less time with our old friends. Does that mean we have to lose them? In this episode, I chat with Ting An, a financial consultant and the author of The Simple Wallet, a millennial adulting guide turning complex financial concepts into simple solutions. He is also the co-founder of the watch brand Kairos, and part of the team of expertise and education startup. Oh yes, he is also a university student taking his bachelor's degree in NUS business. And he also heads the NUS Entrepreneurship Society. With the number of roles that Zinga is taking up, he found himself making some difficult social decisions when he entered the vibrant university and hall environment. If we chase our dream, will we lose our friends? How do we surround ourselves with new quality connections without alienating our current relationships? This is a question that if we can figure out can greatly impact many areas of our life including career, relationships and even our mental health. So let's dive right into this week's podcast. Firstly, I want to thank, thank you for you know, inviting me. Actually, you know, today um, is really the question of um, how do we surround ourselves with quality people without alienating our current relationships. Very real problem, honestly speaking. So I stayed in hall. Uh, I think maybe you also stayed in hall, right? And you can understand yeah. la, the, the power environment. Because I study communication studies and you in business school, right? These schools are generally very social schools. Being around friends is a huge part of the school. Like people go into university because they want to have an experience of their lifetime. And I don't think that's wrong. That's perfectly fine. It's more of the question of what yeah. happens when there's a certain point in your life, you want to chase a certain passion, right? Maybe your mindset slowly changes. And naturally, the older friends that we have mm. or the people that were around us, sometimes even our family, they have a different mindset from us. What we are trying to do, we are trying to change ourselves. Kind of like a, a different direction. That's why this problem sets in. You stay the same, you won't have this problem. You just chill, hang out, do the same thing. But the problem comes in when we're trying to change ourselves. And I want to bring this story, right? And this gives me a lot of enlightenment. It's Dan Lok's story. La. I saw this video. And um, it's a sick fish that actually uh, died. So fish tank expert came. Dan Lok asked, so what happened? Like, why, why, why do my fish? Why did it die? Right? It's because there's other sick fish. After Dan Lok asked, should we then treat the fish? The fish tank expert said, no. You're not supposed to treat the fish. You're supposed to treat the water. Because when the environment is so polluted, right? Then the other fish also will be affected. So we are just like this fish, you know. If you want to try to change ourselves, we need to change our environment. Right. So understanding this is important because we must make a decision, right, to acknowledge that we want to change our environment. For myself, right, I have always been into entrepreneurship. I used to party quite a lot in army. After army, then I was focusing a lot on entrepreneurship. So six months straight before university, I was really you know, going for courses, working on my brand, Kairos and whatever. Eventually, right, when I go to university, I always wanted to go to hall life. I actually appealed from one hall to another so that I can have a more fun hall life. I changed like, my whole trajectory changed. I had a lot of fun. But it comes to a point, honestly, I wanted to chase success, right? I had internal struggle, like what am I doing, right? Why is it not bringing me there? That was when I made a decision. I focused on less uh, social activities and more on like things I want to do. So I joined Toastmasters. I joined NUS Entrepreneur Society. I put more time and effort into my watch brand. Then the fear came. I feared losing my whole friends. I was thinking, you know, who do I eat dinner and lunch with now? It's a huge concept, especially in business school, where everybody judges each other, right? But then I just meet more people who are pursuing the same interests that I had. I began to meet aspiring entrepreneurs, right? Who are just like me. I learned their story. But all along, in my whole entire journey, right? Since before going to university, I always document. I always share what I do. Naturally, when I share more entrepreneurship related content again, people got more curious. In hall, I didn't really share as much because it's a bit weird do all this motivational stuff and whatnot. So this different environment. So I understand that if our environment doesn't support that, right, we feel that we might get judged. Ultimately, we want to hang out with people, right, who encourage you towards where you want to go. Friends who have similar goals as you, right, and you aspire to be like them, they ultimately support you. La. It's really just a personal decision on what you're going to prioritize. La. You and I, logically, we know if you want to be successful, you go and find people that are successful and you surround yourself with it. I mean, 
who doesn't know that, right? It's logical. <laughs> but because we all yeah. seek to be accepted and understood and we want to be yeah. loved. And currently the environment that we're in is giving us that love and that acceptance. We are so comfortable and we just want to stay. Yeah. But then the uncomfort comes in when you start thinking, I want to be successful, but I also want to be here. And then there's that difference. It's like, how can I be successful yeah. in that area, but stay with my friends? And then you're like, oh, stress. Last time I used to work in a club. Lah. Clubbing creates an environment of escapism and fun because you always want to escape from reality, which is why you get high. And that is the environment that I've been surrounded with. I didn't get exposed to entrepreneurship so early. Lah. For me, it was like early year two. And I started meeting more people like you guys, but of course, other people like my mentors, people who are like older, running their own business, really having that mindset. And that exposed me to a brand new world that I never even knew. So there was this huge shift and I felt so conflicted because I was afraid of losing friends, but I also wanted these new friends. I realized that it's just choosing the medium in which you connect with people. So instead of clubbing with my friends right now you can always just text your friends and ask them how about we have lunch instead right i mean you save the time a clubbing night would take like four hours or like the next day you, until 12 noon you also hang over the whole day man hang over <laughs> it's one, one day, right? four hours not four hours day four hours man. yeah <laughs> but but i'm sure like you can agree right sometimes the deepest conversations is just a 30 minutes to one hour meal or coffee with the person i mean that's how you still connect with your old friends but you just do it in a different way, right? Maybe you don't hang out so often in groups or like all go uh, excursion together, but you just date them one-on-one. -on -one. So that's another way that you can uh, sort of like maintain the connection. Lah. Ultimately, people come and go in our lives. Lah. Yep, definitely. Yeah, and there are people that are meant to stay forever. There are, men there are people who are meant to just stay with us for a certain period. Uh, people who are meant to nurture us. There's one thing that I would like to talk about, which is the idea of like being afraid to be judged. It's first is to acknowledge that I want to be different. I, I told myself I'm the top one percent, right? Uh, it's a bold statement, right? So the thing is, I want to be top one percent. I must do things that the ninety nine percent of the people are not doing. So if I'm doing something that ninety nine percent is doing, right? Then there's something wrong. I'm not on track. I listen to this song every single day, every single day, right? In the year one, and it's called uh, it's by Davin, right? In fact, one of my caption is that. It's by daring, right? Uh, be what you want to be. And uh, that mindset helps. That mindset, right, is like, okay, I'm going to do something different. I need to do something different. So actually, you realize, right, that when we are young, right, we want to earn the approval of our parents. When we transit to school, we want to um, earn the approval of our friends. Eventually, when we go, when we adopt, right, we want to get the approval of the society. But the thing is, all we need is the approval from ourselves. That's all. When we are afraid of how people think of us, it's because inside, we actually are not confident of our identity yet. When you are so certain of the goal that you're you're going towards, right? Nobody can shake you. Ma. Then all the, the the afraid of being judged, like, oh, you know, you're being weird, you're just being try hard, it slowly <laughs> eats into you because you start to believe it because yeah. you're not certain of it yourself. You need to understand that. So all our friends, you know, you, have, you know, we all want to study very hard. Let's say the typical university student, you want to study hard, you know, get a good internship, get a good CCA, right? Um, they all have good intentions for us. Same for our parents, they have good intentions for us, right? Good intentions doesn't mean it's good advice, right? Because ultimately, we have our own goal, ma, right? So, first thing you have to understand that. Second thing is we have a difference between advice and opinion. So, mm. opinion is people who, anybody can comment any single thing. But advice is people who have been there, done that. So, you know, let's say if I'm the top 1%, for example, right, it's a bit extreme, right? And uh, my parents are not. Yeah, of course, I, I shouldn't take everything that they say wholeheartedly. Of course, I told them, you know, you got to understand that, you know, some, some I don't listen, it's because of this, right? But of course, when when um I did certain things, right, I had to um show the results first, then they, 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 they had the buy-in, right? I think with these two things, the two main, main key uh, mindset, right, regarding differentiating advice and opinion, and also understanding the intentions and, and advice that people give, um, then we know, like, right, who to listen to. Gradually transit to the environment you want to be. Right, so I took baby steps, you know. I was in extreme environments. I was like six months of entrepreneurship, you know, go to so many courses, right? Then go back to school, right? Back to partying and uh, studying. And, you know, I, I saw the transition. Like, everyone asked me if we, if we have regret. No, it's just a phase of my life that I really enjoy. And I always tell them, you know, I'm very thankful for this experience. But I think I gradually transited, you know. I, I started to join clubs. Right? Clubs is the easiest way, you know. Just join an entrepreneurship club. The environment helps, right? And, of course, um, slowly from there, you meet more and more people, mm. right? So, I think it's really about having the courage to be open-minded, right? It is 
not what you know that kills you, right? It is what you know that just in so. This is by Mark Twain. And hence, you know, it is, you know, if you think, I, I know, I know. So, you know, it's really about being open, right? And then uh, meet people and then um, learn from their perspective and their story. You know, my mentor told me this, uh, that helped a lot. In, in university, the whole entire four years, right? We don't really actually remember the, the specific grade that we have, right, for our particular module. But what we do remember, right, is the books we have read and the people we have met. That is the things we should appreciate. We, we, we don't need to understand, right, friend is friend. Like, work or, or passion is another thing. Our friend don't even have the same passion as us. So, mm. um, as long as we focus on being having the value of a good friend, then that is fine, really. Like, we didn't do anything wrong, what? Like, change interest means means not become a good friend, man. So Completely. then, um, Yeah, in fact, one thing that I, I realised is that, like, true friends, even if they don't know or don't understand what you're doing, they will stick with you. I have this one friend in university. She actually told me before in my face, like, Ray, uh, you're doing a lot of things right now and sometimes I don't really understand what you're doing. But she, I, get that. I see the... But he, she said this and it really brought um, uh, 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 goosebumps to my body. She said, but I saw the change that you have been going through since year one of uni to year four in uni and I really like this change. So go ahead and do what you're doing. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like when she said that, my heart literally was just like, I, I fluttered lah. <laughs> like, is someone just telling you like, you know, and even sometimes my parents, I, at one point of time, after, after a year or two, they finally accepted that I was choosing this route. Because obviously at the start, they, they were apprehensive. So sometimes my parents, um, they don't understand what I do completely. But secretly, they, since, you're the, I mean, since I'm their daughter, they will still support me. You know, and sometimes I do sales, they'll say, hey, I got this friend interested in this thing, right? I send number, that kind of thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just the sweetest things ever because like people really, people around you actually do love you. Those people that love you, they really do love you. And, and those are the people that you don't have to worry will leave. Lah. You know, um, if you really have a heart for people and if you really want to help others and you really want to serve others, there's just no way that you'll be left with zero friends. Like, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> correct, 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 correct. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's true. And uh, pointing out the fact that, you know, there's a financial advisors, right, there's a stigma and whatnot, right? But ultimately, it's really about understanding your own value. You get what I mean? And uh, that's why I always strive to increase my own value in any way possible. Um, whether it's financial planning or as a friend or as, a, as someone who's pursuing my passion in education, there's no problem meeting people, right? Uh, people want to meet you. As long as we do the correct things, having the correct mindset, have mm. values, um, having a correct character, right? Um, I think there's no issues of whatever we want to, pursue in our life sure understanding what is the value that you actually give to others yes and being correct. very confident in that yeah so you never have that thinking of like oh am i taking advantage of the person like yeah you are adding a value it's just everything in life there's always a one-on-one -on -one transaction like every job out there you get paid because you provide a service right mm. like even if you're a consultant you're a freelancer you got to charge because whatever value that you produce, you get paid for it. Like that's, we'll stop. that's how the, the economy goes. That's how the world goes around. I think that's about it. Everything that you said today has really encapsulated the, the question of like, you know, will we lose friends? We talked about how do we get rid of feeling like we're going to be judged and things like that. But ultimately for our listeners, it's really their own personal journey. And I'm sure like Singan and I were both very willing to open our DMs for anybody who you know, just wants to have someone to talk to and uh, wants a listening ear. Please go and follow Tingan on his Instagram as well. He is doing awesome stuff on there. And uh, yeah, I mean, um, it may up if you want to do public speaking and a personal uh, branding stuff, right? I think she's doing awesome. I think ultimately we have a similar mission, right? Um, to really, you know, serve and impact. We are who we are today. It's because of someone else, ultimately, right? And um, like my mentor told me, like, you know, if you have grown because of someone else, help someone else grow because of you. Yes. Um, and that's just why we're doing what we're doing today. Think that we're not gurus or whatever. We are here right. to share, um, to yeah. educate based on our journey as of now. As you mentioned, we are not gurus. An ordinary person, an ordinary, I use ordinary with asterisks, right? An ordinary person can have an extraordinary story as well. You know, of course, it would be great. Let us know what you think of um, what I've watched. Uh, or even comment in the mm. uh, comments section below, right? Mm. About, you know, um, what struck you the most? The only thing that content creators, right, would love, right, is to be able to know that their content impacted someone's life, ever mean a world to them, mm. that what we are trying to do, right, has some results. Okay, so uh, once again, thank you, Tingan, for being um, an awesome guest on my podcast. And I'll see mm. all of you. So as Tingan's followers, hello, I'm Ray. I'll see all of you on my next episode of my podcast. Yeah. Bye. Bye.